Welcome to the 8th Getting to Carnegie competition, except it's no longer called the Getting to Carnegie competition. I, however, am still Julian, pianist with the hair. We were all set to have our final round at Carnegie's Zankel Hall when the lovely COVID of Omicron variety decided to peak. And as a fair amount of our regulars are no longer exactly in their teens, uh -oh. decided to hold off. In the meantime, we've changed our name to the world's biggest stage, i.e. the internet and are looking forward to our biggest turnout yet, or at the very least, the parents of all four finalists. This year's competition is for cello, and we had an overwhelming number of applicants from 17 different countries. These four musicians you're about to hear are among the finest young cellists on the planet, and I couldn't be prouder to have them give the world premiere of my very own new cello sonata, The Time Between Moments, which was commissioned by my good friend Dan Coleman patron of the arts and hopeless romantic. This commission was in fact a birthday present for his wife. Happy birthday! So the rules of the competition. You may remember that contrary to other classical competitions, this one's not fixed. I mean, sorry, is judged by you, the public. We trust you to choose the best of the best. Also, you will ultimately be the ones who come to the concerts of tomorrow's stars. So why shouldn't it be you to choose them in the first place? But we couldn't have it be only you. So while you decide 50% of the vote, the other 50% is decided by the past winners of this very competition, including last year's winner, violinist Maria Duenas, who following her win here, went on to take first place in the Tretyakov International, Menuhin Competition, and the Long Island Hot Dog Eating Contest. Maybe not. Plus we have Jan Vogler, world famous cellist, who has generously donated his time in exchange for me using the words world famous in his intro. But seriously, it is an incredible honor to have him here with us. Other than a ridiculously incredible cellist, Jan shares my view that classical music can be made fun, accessible, and relatable to all, and in doing so, has teamed up with actor Bill Murray to create his own remarkably unique barrier-crossing show. To vote, you need simply enter your email address and choose your favorite cellist. Remember, one vote per email account, so get going and start creating as many new email accounts as you can. This stream will be available for seven days, at which time it will automatically self-destruct. I would be remiss not to thank the entire board of the world's biggest stage, as well as the incomparable Jeffrey John Davies who created the violin channel and runs it with such selfless devotion. And of course, thank all of you for being here with us, listening, enjoying, voting, and sharing in the wonder that is classical music. Let the games begin. Jan Vogler, I am so excited to be talking with you. Thank you for accepting to be celebrity jury member of our competition this year. It's my honor and pleasure to be here. Young cellist is always a great, Great thing. I always love it. Well, you know, I just want to tell you that you're very heavily guarded by your agents. This Zoom call is as close as they'd let me get to you. I'm really sorry. I would have loved to met, have met you in, in New York. It's amazing what you have built with this competition. And I think it's a, it's a great way of, of um, finding new paths. As you said, you know, we want to make music, classical music accessible, but we still want the highest possible quality because to enchant, it needs it needs you know, skill and, and emotions and excitement. But and at the same time, uh, we want to bring in new people and we want to show everyone how wonderful the music is we, we are playing all our lives. I think in a way we share a, a, a trait of wanting to make classical music more accessible and relatable and, and um, fun. And uh, on that topic, um, I can't uh, not ask you about actor comedian Bill Murray, who you have a show with, are the rumors true that he travels in your cello case to save the airfare? <laughs> we met on an airplane and um, he was scandalized that the cello got the window seat. He was upstaged by a cello. <laughs> yes, um, touring with him was really like nothing else I have experienced in my life. I understand you have a, you have a really, really cool and different kind of show called uh, New Worlds. 
if, if, if I'm correct, if, if Google tells me accurately. It's a real show. It's not a reading of literature with music. Um, it has an incredible build and usually in the end, everybody is, is going crazy. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's something that surprises people and gets them each time. And, and each time they just don't see it coming. Well, I, I couldn't be more excited about you being the celebrity jury member. The other jury members will be all past winners of the of the competition, but I think you're the perfect person. You're you're the ambassador for bringing music, uh, classical music, to the world, and um, and in a way, that's what this competition aims to do. So thank you, thank you so much, uh, Jan, for being here.
Johannes, that was a great performance. Fantastic. How's it going? Great. Where are you right now? Right now I'm at home in Paris. At home in Paris, just like me. <laughs> and uh, I see you've cut your hair. So you'll be the cellist with the hair very soon. <laughs> exactly. And how are you enjoying the French? And despite the what Americans might think of them being a bit cold, I think they're very friendly people, and I, so I really enjoyed it. So let's try uh, a couple of, um, I guess, short answer questions. We'll go through it kind of fast. Uh, don't feel like you have to give a, a, a long answer. So what's your favorite piece of music? That's, you asked for a short answer, but that's a very, uh, that's a difficult question. Um, um, but I don't know, it's, it's impossible. It changes every day, maybe a couple of times during the day. Yes. Speed, I see, in answering these questions. <laughs> maybe a challenge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, if you couldn't play the cello, what would you do? I always wanted to be a scientist of some sort, probably with animals, probably with birds. Do you dream at night and do you remember it? Always, yeah. Flying or invisibility, if you had to choose? Flying, for sure. Netflix or Amazon Prime? Uh, Netflix. If you had to live in the city or in the country, where would you live? Countryside. Um, solo concert or chamber? Chamber music. Dostoevsky or Tolstoy? Dostoevsky. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed, but left eye. <laughs> and middle-eared. <laughs> <laughs> Are your parents musicians? Uh, yes. Do you have siblings? Two sisters. When did you start the cello and when did you know it was going to be that for you? Uh, extremely early. So what age would that have been? That was when I was like as from infant to the moment where I saw a cello for the first time, a, a, a small cello for the first time. I was two and a half. Two and a half. That is that is very early. Wow. I wanted to also ask if there's anything um, that you want to talk about. Like, I do this, and this is something that you might not know about me. Um, I don't... I'm a, I'm a serial killer on the side. <laughs> Here's my little cat. His name is Brigic. Now he follows us everywhere. Does he follow you on Instagram? Yes. <laughs> He does not like cello. As soon as I start practicing, he's out. Well, it's a good thing that he's not part of the voting committee. <laughs> um, well, Johannes, it's, uh, it's been great talking to you and uh, very excited that you're one of our finalists. And um, let's see what happens.
Alex, that was an amazing performance. Uh, how are you doing? Busy as usual, like everyone else. Busy as you? usual. Where are you in New York? I am in Manhattan. I'm curious if you can tell me what uh, an average day in the life of Alex is is like these days. Practicing, eating good food, <laughs> enjoying New York summer. Which is easy yeah. to do in New York, I guess, eating yeah, good guess. food. So what's your favorite piece of music? Right now, uh, Beethoven's Sonata Number 4. If you couldn't play the cello, what would you do? Mm. Boxing instructor. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe becoming a diplomat. Do you dream at night? Yes. <laughs> Flying or invisibility? Flying. Netflix or Amazon Prime? I would say Netflix. <laughs> city or country, if you had to choose where to live? I think I'm a city girl. <laughs> Solo concert or chamber? Chamber. Dostoevsky or Tolstoy? Tolstoy, I would say. <laughs> are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Um, are your parents musicians? No. Oh. And do you have siblings? Yes. So you grew up in um, in the States, right? No, I grew up in Korea. I was there actually for, well, the longer portion of my life. I was there until I was 14. And then oh, wow. before I began high school, I moved to Chicago, which is where I attended high school. You sound very um, Americanized. <laughs> I mean, I've been here for 10 years now, so... I guess that's a long time, yeah. <laughs> Were you already playing the cello when you came to the States? Yes, but I wasn't really that serious about it. <laughs> if you were to win a very large sum of money, what's the first thing you would do? Uh, make sure my family's taken care of. If you had to think of your wildest ambition, like... Wildest ambition. Mm. For some reason, everybody's surprised by the, like, I mean, not surprised by it, but it's like, yeah, what is my wildest ambition? <laughs> you know, you'd think that that's what you're thinking about, but actually it's not. I was asked that same question not too long ago, and I was like, yeah, what is it? <laughs> but yeah, what what is it? Now that you're put on the I spot. I say, if... I had, if it was logistically possible and everything was like possible, um, in my wildest dreams, I think I would create a school just somewhere that students don't have to worry about politics or um, the messy side of academia, I would say. Thank you again, Alex, and uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, great talking to you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, Katerina. That was an amazing performance. Um, how are you doing? Thank you so much. I'm doing very well. I'm currently here in Weimar, in Germany, uh, where I'm pursuing my bachelor degree here. How's your German? Oh, it's quite bad at the moment. <laughs> shall, shall we continue in German? No, please not. <laughs> what is a lot of practice for you? How many hours? I guess I tend to practice until... Until I, I... blood is dripping from your fingers. No. <laughs> no, but um, sometimes it happens, but that's normal. I think it happens to everyone. Are you a morning person or do you practice at night or...? Oh, I'm definitely not a morning person. In my old school, we used to practice from 7.45 to 8.45 in the morning. Um, which was quite painful, I have to say. Yes, yeah, especially for the neighbors, I would think. How long have you been in Weimar? In Weimar, I moved here in um, April 2022. You made it seem like a long time ago by telling me the year, but then it's the same year as this year. <laughs> I started in April 2022. <laughs> yeah. Favorite piece of music? Human cello concerto. <laughs> if you couldn't play the cello, what would you do? Um, doing artistic gymnastics. Artistic gymnastics. Do you dream? Do you remember your dreams? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Mostly when they're bad, I do remember them. <laughs> if you had to choose between flying or invisibility? Flying. Favorite thing you've watched this month? Uh, Queen Elizabeth competition. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Netflix or Amazon Prime? Netflix. If you had to live in the city or the country? Um, city. Solo concert or chamber? Both. Dostoevsky or Tolstoy? Tolstoy, yeah. Right-handed or left-handed are you? Right-handed. Right-handed. When did you start the cello? Nine and a half. Until nine, you were you were doing a little piano, maybe? Um, they tried to make me start on the piano, and I really did not like it. If you won a million dollars, what what would you do? Now, maybe I should change that question to a billion dollars because a million <laughs> you don't do much anymore. But if you won a lot of money, um, what's the first thing you would do? Oh, that's very difficult. But I, I guess with my some family members and my closest friends, some well, of it. Well, you would share it? Yeah. Okay, um, that's nice. Um, yeah, not whole, maybe. And then maybe buy a really nice children, I don't know. Well, thank you, Katerina. This has been uh, very, very interesting. And uh, best of luck. And uh, we'll see what happens. Yes. <laughs> Bye, thank you.
Gaen. That was an amazing performance. Well done. Thank you so much. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's great to have you here. Now, am I pronouncing that correctly? Say it again for me. I'm Gaen. Gaen. I know I'm going to keep getting it wrong throughout this conversation. Gaen. Okay, Gaen. So where are you uh, located right now? Where are we talking to you from? So right now, I came back to Seoul, Korea. So wait, so you're in Seoul right now? Yes. Oh my goodness. So it's really late at night. It's like 1 a.m. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I thought it was New York. You should have told me. I'm so sorry. I'm a night I feel terrible. <laughs> no. Should I whisper? Am I waking the neighbors up? It's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. So it's, it's very exciting to have you as one of the finalists in this competition. I wanted to ask you just a couple of quick questions. So what's your favorite piece of music? This is hard. Um, Schumann Romances. Oh, the Schumann Romances. Okay. If you couldn't play the cello, what would you do? Um, dance. <laughs> dance. Do you dream? At night? Yes. If you could choose between flying or invisibility? Flying. Netflix or Amazon Prime? Netflix. City or country if you had to choose where to live? City. <laughs> Solo concert or chamber? Solo. Dostoevsky or Tolstoy? Tolstoy. <laughs> Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Parents, musicians? Um, my mom is a flutist. Do you have siblings? I have one younger brother. When did you know that you were going to be a cellist? I started cello like three years old, but um, the first time I got on stage was when I was four. And yeah, since then I wanted to be a cellist and um, kind of knew that I would be a cellist in the future. <laughs> you already knew when you were four, I have a four-year-old son. He doesn't <laughs> even know if he wants to play Lego or drink juice. But you also mentioned dance before, so was dance something that you also did? I really got into dancing so and um, I love dancing, yeah. That's cool. If you won a million dollars, what's the first thing you'd do? I would get a new bow. <laughs> you get a new bow. Because for a second I thought you said a new boat. I was thinking, oh. wow, she has an old boat. That's impressive already. <laughs> get a new boat. I get a new Ferrari. This oh. old Ferrari is really not working out well. You said you have a younger brother? Yes. Is he a musician as well? Um, he doesn't like classical music, actually. Smart boy. Very smart boy. <laughs> it's been great talking to you and uh, very excited that you're one of our finalists. Best of luck. I hope you've enjoyed this first edition of the world's biggest stage, formerly known as the Getting to Carnegie competition, brought to you by the Violin Channel and the Pianist with the Hair. We'd like to thank you all for tuning in and remind you we are a non-for-profit 501c3 and would never turn away donations, especially in the form of real estate. As the saying goes, wear your heart on your sleeve, but when it comes time to donate, dip into your pockets as well. Thanks again for being with us here today. We know your time is your most valuable asset, so if you'd like a refund for the past 40 minutes of your life, please visit the box office on 57th and 7th. Thanks.